uh, Sonia, but most of the time, if a workflow skips an email, there might be some missing elements in that because the workflow can send out email if you are missing like some brackets with the cost and values. Because oh, if yeah. you're going to send out an email with a, with a broken like cost and values, it might oh. turn up blank into like the recipients. So I that see. might be one of the case. So we might need to thoroughly check on your lines of the emails to make sure that you got all the right elements in. So yeah. Awesome. No problem. So yeah, so we have Trisha on, we got Kate, and we got Steve. So you guys, if you have any particular questions with me, just put it in Zoom chat so we can address those questions. And if you guys have any, maybe uh, like maybe uh, if you want to request any like session, you can do in the toolbox. You can just email at supportedtechmedics.com for a feedback or maybe a recommendation on what we can cover for our next following session for a tech toolbox. But for now, for our tech toolbox for today, we're going to discuss about like some of the new updates we got with Techmatics. It includes uh, the internal notifications, keeping the workflow, which is basically using the uh, native internal notification coming from forms. Um, and we'll have our new integration with payment links with you skipping, creating like order forms, creating funnels, creating products and stuff like that. And just basically using our payment links to maybe send to clients, send to students for them to make a payment with maybe some of your offers and stuff like that. And also we have something called um, new branded domain in Techmatics, but this might be a bit tricky if you guys already started marketing your links, especially with booking links and calendars, forms, uh, what else? Uh, payment links and stuff like that. Because as you can see, when, uh, let me just try to share my screen. And uh, hang on, let me just get something for a demo. As you observe, for example, if you're currently using our Techmatics like calendar system or booking links to have people like booking a call with you, it has linked the techmatics.com front slash booking and then some random letters in it, right? Um, it's actually the Techmatics like branded domain for our whole like company or agency that we're going to, uh, I mean, that we allocated to each of the users of Techmatics to use as their default like booking link or maybe like a form link, survey link and stuff like that. But with the new updates with Techmatics, you can definitely brand that with own, with your own domain. So it could be like link that your domain.com instead of having link, link that Techmatics.com for your bookings, forms and stuff like that. So I'll show you the uh, proper setup for that. But first, let's jump on to our forms. Let me just get my screen up right here and then I'll share my screen. Uh, I have some question here from Trisha. So let me just get that one up. Okay, so uh, Trisha is asking about, can I add my Canva sales page templates to my Techmatics? Um, Canva, sales page is actually different with Techmatics, um, Trisha. So if you have your, uh, do you have your website on Canva? Is that right? Uh, and how, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. You can hear me. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, I actually downloaded this a, a couple, like a while ago before Techmatics, um, mm -hmm. and it's really pretty. And, um, so I think like I can edit it in, the canva website mm -hmm. so i think it's a can my canva website that i can edit the things in but i'm not exactly sure so i was like they just they're so professional and so like like it, everything is um like matches and it looks really pretty so i'm like yeah. instead of me trying to redo everything in techmatics not a problem um, yeah you can um yeah, because currently, if you have your sales page in Canva, we can actually directly import it with Techmatics unless you're going to download each of those, like maybe tiles to use as an element inside Techmatics. But let me maybe ask you one question, Trisha. How do you collect payments from those sales pages? Does Canva has an integration with maybe payment, uh, payment platforms? I don't have any, I have never used them. So oh, they've just okay. been like in the back. So I would just try to integrate it with Techmatics and use my links within Techmatics, you mm. know, my pay links in Techmatics. Okay, maybe you're going to uh, make use of our payment links that we're going to discuss yeah. today. What I can okay. maybe suggest, Trisha, if you really like how it looks like on Canva, just maybe 
stay uh let your like sales page stay on Canva. Just link your domain so you can have it as an actual like web uh website in Canva. And we can just integrate it with various forms inside Technetics and payment links since it's a sales page, right? So what we can do with that is you can maybe add a button to your Canva like sales page and have that button redirect to the payment page in your Technetics account. And that way okay. you can have your like visuals or like the external site from Canva. But all the incoming uh like uh activities like payments, opt-ins, form submissions, stuff like that will go through your CRM, which is Techmatics. So you can have your uh those form submissions or the contact submitted the form or pay for the products imported automatically as a contact inside your Techmatics account. So maybe we can do that. Mm -mm. Yeah, if you could show, like, <laughs> it sounds good, but I'm like, ah, what do I do? Yeah, no problem. Don't worry. We'll do okay. a demo. Okay. Awesome. It's actually the Thank same you. with how we're going to edit the sales pages inside, inside Technatics, because in Canva, you can definitely allocate a link for each of the element, right? So just allocate okay. a link for your button that you want that you want when people to click on it, well, they will be redirected to the payment page where you have to pay for the product itself. So Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. So let me just share my screen. Uh, uh, if you guys have any other questions, just put it on the chat box so we can also discuss uh, discuss about it. So yeah. So I'm currently on my Technetics account. I'll show you onto forms first. So yeah, this is our form builder. So currently with Techmatics, we are actually advancing with creating like more templates that you can use and teams that you can use for your form uh, forms, surveys, and other stuff. So for example, when uh, I'm currently in websites and funnels, form and form builder, and let me just maybe uh, walk you through on those like drop downs so that you can see under the form tab. So first part, we have the builder here. So the builder is where you're going to create a form. So this is basically how you're going to add a form, create a form, customize your form and stuff like that. And for analyze, this is how you're going to compare which of the form has more uh has more submissions? Which of the form has like maybe a lot of like submissions and stuff like that? Currently, I don't have any records because this is a demo account. But if you're going to try it with your own sub account, and if you've been maybe have been using form for like opt-ins and stuff like that, you will definitely see statistics for analyze where you can see other people, how many people submitted a form from those like dates and time periods. Yeah. And lastly, we have submissions where you can see all the submissions you got from the form. And again, I don't have, sorry, I should have put any statistics in there, but this is where you're going to see all the submissions from the forms you got. So you can also filter it from which forms. And for example, if you want to see all the people that submitted a form for your link and lead form, you can just click on that and automatically the record will pop up here. So sorry, I haven't prepared any statistics for you to, uh, to see, but you can try it on your end if you've been using our forms. So yeah, and don't forget if you're going to maybe check the submissions and analyze, don't forget to configure the dates in here because it might show you like blank, like maybe blank records and stuff like that. But you can definitely switch from, for example, uh, this year. So you can see all the submission for this year and stuff like that. So you have the option to configure the dates or the time period where the data, uh, where you want to uh, see the data you got for form submissions and also for analyze. So yeah, so let's head over to Builder so we can start creating a form. So in your account, we have maybe like pre-populate uh, some of the existing forms you got there. But you can definitely start your own by cre creating add a form. And you also can create a folder if you want to get organized with your form so you can't, like, you know, you can't lose anything. But in our case, I'll just start with uh, creating a new form. So I'll just add a form. And then you have the option to start from scratch where it will just uh, show you a blank form page with just a basic contact information. But you can also choose from our templates. So yeah, so these are the templates we got for our forms. You can definitely use all of this and everything that you can find onto these templates can be optimized and can be uh, updated into whatever you want to use it for. So for example, I want to use this like purple one. I'll just click on the eye icon in the top right of the square or the rectangle uh, like section. And then after that, you're just going to click and continue and that will be automatically loaded into your account. So that's basically how you're going to import a form template inside your Techmatics account. So yeah, so it will automatically uh, open up. And this is how the form looks like. So you have the option to update whatever you can find here 
when you click on this uh, on the right hand side, you will see that like maybe like setting icon in there that says silent option. Just click on that and it will give you more options and how you're going to make it look like. So for example, for this purple box right here, I want to make it like maybe uh, like a bit lighter or I could also maybe make it a bit darker and stuff like that. So you have the option to update whatever you can find it here, including the colors, the text, the pictures and stuff like that. And if you have your own hex code for your branding, you definitely have your hex code added in here. So yeah, but those are actually not necessary. It's just for the aesthetics. So for example, for this image right here, if you want to take this out, oh yeah, I just realized that we actually don't have the option for the forms to replace the image. So if you want to maybe update this image, what you can just do is delete this existing one and upload a new one by clicking on this cross icon on the left-hand side. And just basically um and scroll down to customize and you get this image option here. Just click on that and drag it across the top of your form. And you can just click on choose file. And you can just choose your file from your computer. So for example, this one, I'll add it as my uh like header on top of my form. So it will look like this. So again, if you have an existing uh image in there that you want to um replace just delete it and upload a new one because currently our form does not um does not support updating the image existing onto the form so yeah i would maybe put that on our uh recommendation for our job to work on any questions so far for that yeah so i think we're fine so i just replace it with that image so, uh sorry if that's too big so i'm going to maybe show you all the elements we got in the form so on the left hand side, we have these plus icons where you can add all the elements you want to add. So these elements include all the standard fields. So standard field means those are the fields that are already inside the system. Those are the standard fields includes like basic contact information, like their name, contact information, phone, email, their address, postal codes, country codes, and stuff like that. So this can be found onto your standard fields, which can you can find into this quick add like tab. But if you're going to switch over to custom fields, these are the fields that are not yet inside the system. And these are the fields that you can customize. It could be maybe questions specific to your business. Like for example, what are your goals or where do you find us? Or how uh, basically like you asking questions for your like clients to be filled out into a form. So yeah, so let me just go back to quick add because I'm going to show you something. So for, for the customize, I'll show you how to add the picture into the form, right? So that's one option for the customization, but you also have the option to add, uh, add in a text. So if you want to put some labels in there, you can definitely do that through here. Or you can also add in an HTML, which could be basically a code that you can add. It could be maybe, I'm actually not sure if it's supported in this like form, but you can maybe embed a Google map. You can embed like maybe a video. You can embed something inside your form. So those are for the custom HTML like element. I'll just take that one out. Another one is a CAPTCHA where it can, uh, it will like add a CAPTCHA with your form. So if you want to do that, you can definitely add a CAPTCHA in. And then for the source, if you want to like target the source, so it could be, for example, if it could be a submission coming from a, uh, from Facebook, it could be a native or organic submission. You can also add in source in there. This is not something that your clients could fill out. Automatically, the system will capture it. So yeah. And then another one, we have T and, uh, T and C which is uh, maybe a requirement, not a maybe requirement, it's a requirement for form submissions, especially with uh, GDPR and stuff like that. So you can definitely have your um, TNC in here. If you want people to like click on a checkbox in order for them to uh, like read your terms and services, especially if you're going to use the email that they submitted through this form into your email campaigns, if, if, if it has like phone numbers, it can be SMS campaigns and stuff like that. So yeah. So for the TNC, uh, it will just, it has this default text in here that you definitely customize. You can just click on a TNC and this uh, and this tab on the right hand side will pop up where you can update the copy of the TNC. So you have the option to customize it. Oh, uh, I just realized there's a very uh, short stuff in here to edit. So yeah, I might need to reach out to our dev to check if we can do something about it. But for example, for the terms and conditions, you can just update it 
to have your link added in there instead of having uh, the default link added by Technetics. So what you can just do is highlight the text, click on the three dots, click on this link icon, and then pop in the link you got for your terms and condition. And that way, when people receive this form through their email, or maybe you sending it through Messenger, or maybe a, any social platform, when they click on the term and condition, they, they will be redirected to the term and condition you got from maybe your website, it could be from your landing page, or it could be a document that you have allocated for your terms and conditions. So yeah. So I'll just close this down. I won't touch that one. Let's just leave that, uh, let's just leave that, uh, let that, as is. And then since we already have the custom, uh, customized part, let's hop onto custom fields. So these are the custom fields that we have as, as of the moment. These are just basically for a test. And the example of the custom fields that I'm going to show you is this one. So this is a questions um, basically asked by the form because this form is specifically, uh, specifically for donations and sponsorship. So they have the options to have the sponsors. But if, for example, if you want to create your own custom fields, if you want to add a custom field into your, inside your form, what you're going to do is just click on add custom fields and then this pop-up will show up. For your custom field, you have the option to collect information or custom fields um, on a text form. You can have it as a number form. It could be maybe like uh, a week. It could be like a number of times they've been to the gym. Um, it could be a number of kids they have number of uh, maybe houses they own and stuff like that. So we have those uh, different uh, like type of custom fields you can add. So if you have if you want to have a text text input input, you can have a single line, which is basically a small line. This would maybe applicable if you're going to um, collect information that will just uh, provide or ask like very short answers. But if you think you need to have like more space for the response, you can have a multi line. And we also have a text box list here. And also, I forgot to show, um, uh, mention that you will have the preview and how the, floor, uh, the field will look like into the form on the right hand side. So single line will look like this. It's just a very small like uh, response box for the responses. Multi line will have a bigger box for the responses. And text, uh, text box list will have like different lists for the text box that they can provide. So maybe just for a sample, let's have a text uh, text box list. So let's just click on next. Uh, maybe for uh, for the name, this we're going to add the question for the custom field or the label for the custom field. Uh, maybe uh, let me just ask, what are what are, are your dog name dog's name? So let me just do it like that. For the group, I can show you the group for now, but just add it on the additional info. But for the groups, this is basically the setup on how you can see it onto your, hang on, let me just try to go to my sub account quick so I can show you how that, right, uh, how that one works and how to optimize it. Okay, sorry, my screen turns back. So yeah, so when I go to contacts, and uh, maybe I'll use, uh, these are some of the test data we got. Uh, hang on. So yeah. So on the contact record, you will see all of this stuff, like the contact, general info, additional info, social media, and the compliance and the contact, uh, contact engagement score. These are basically what this group are for. So if you guys are creating custom fields and you want to segregate those custom fields depending on the groups. For example, if you're going to create the custom field for a specific uh for a specific form, I really suggest to create your own group first before creating a custom field. So if you want to create a group a new group for your custom fields, just head over to settings and then go to custom fields here and switch over to folders and add in your new folders. So in our case, maybe let's call it uh dog training, let's have, for example, dog training. And then uh, let's just put it on the contact and when we click on save, and when you go back here, go back to contact, that dog training will be here. So this is dog training folder that we got. And if you're creating the uh, custom fields, it's actually not popping up in here because we need to refresh our page, but that group should be uh, an option here to add. So whenever you someone responds to your form, and you want to see what are their dog training uh, information, you can just go to this folder and check their responses. So those are the group for the custom fields. So let me just get over this one.
and I'll just put in additional info for now. Um, and then for the labels, these are how the labels will look like. So for example, I'll call it dog, uh, dog one. Um, let's have dog two and dog three, for example, if they have multiple dogs. And I'll just click on save. After you have saved the custom fields, it will be added at the very end of your uh, custom fields link. So you might give it like uh, maybe 30 seconds to show up. And if not, you might need to maybe switch over from tab to tab just to like, you know, get to configure and to trigger it. But if it won't pop up here, I'll just maybe uh, go and type in dog here. And yeah, and here you go. So if you can find it onto the list, just look for it onto the search bar. So let me just drag the custom field in here. And this is how the field will look like. Oh, this is a head and field. Let me just try to um, configure it so it won't be confusing for you. So yeah, so that's it. So let me just try to do that. So what are dog names? And this text box is basically where they're going to input the dog, uh, their dog's name. So basically that's the text box that's are for. So yeah, so that's basically one sample of the custom fields you can add. And we have a lot of custom fields you can do. We can definitely have a drop down. We can definitely add a value for phone numbers, number, or maybe monetary value. We also have a drop down uh, like menu. We also have a chat box. We have a radio select. We have a date picker. We have a file upload. If you want them to upload a certain file, it could be like maybe, for example, for if you're a fitness coach, you can maybe have them upload their before and after photo. So it really depends on how you're going to use it. And also we have signature if you want to collect signature from your clients. So yeah. So maybe let's just deal with that custom fields for now. I'm just going to save it. Don't forget to save your form from time to time so you won't lose any of the changes you made. So yeah, so those are basically the stuff that we found here on the left-hand side. We'll just go back to the logic later on because currently we're still doing some tests with that. But for the um, notification, this is basically where we're going to skip the creating workflow to receive internal notification whenever someone submitted a form. Because currently, uh, because with Technetics, with the new updates we got, you can now send the notification from the form itself instead of creating a workflow for it. So what you're going to do if, for example, if you have this form and you want to receive notification, when someone submitted the form, what you're going to do is you're going to turn on this email notification. Just put in a subject in here that you want to receive on your uh on your email. So it could be, for example, dog training request form, form submitted. And this would be the subject that I will receive when someone uh, submitted a uh, submitted form. And I'll receive a copy of their responses on my email inbox. So if you guys want to do this one, you can definitely uh, have it applied with your businesses. And that way you'll have a copy of their responses onto your email. And for the email too, which emails do you want to receive this email? So in our case, I want the support uh, our support email to receive the responses for this form submission. And also for the sender name, I'll just put in Technatics. You can also just put in your name or your company. So yeah, so that's basically for the email notification. The email notification is basically the notification that the user will receive. But let's, for example, if you want your client to receive a receipt from the form they have submitted, you can have this autoresponder turn on. This is the same with, for example, if you have used a Google Forms, after you submitted a Google Form like response, you'll definitely receive a uh, receipt, right, for whatever you have filled in. So that's also possible in Techmatics. So you can just turn on this autoresponder. The same thing with how, um, with how we set it up. You can just go into add in a subject. I reply to email. So for example, when a client will reply to the email, which email sh they should reply to. So you're going to add it in here and your sender name needs to be filled in. So it's actually the same thing. So it's just basically them receiving what they have responded to the email. So yeah, so I'll just turn this off because I just want this one to be active. I'm just going to click on save and save this form again. And then, yeah, so basically that's the form that we have. So let's go to size and... um styles and customizations that we can do so we have different options to like customize inside your like forms you have the option to add a background image let's try to maybe upload a background image but i'll just take it out because i don't have anything that i have as of the moment 
and their background image will look like this. So I prefer, uh, maybe I suggest to use a plain background image if you want to have a background image, or you can just take it out if you want to make it clean. So yeah, so we have the option to have the header image too, and we have agency branding in here, which is not necessary. And for the teams, you also have the option to switch over from different teams. So currently we have this team, right? And for example, if you want, if you have decided to use a different team, what you're going to do is you can just click on that exact team you got there, click no proceed, and what will happen is it will update into the team that you have chosen. So yeah, so same thing with this one. So yeah, so you have that option and how you want your form to look like. This looks uh, not too clean, but yeah. And then lastly, we have options. So for the options, we have like different stuff that you need to fill in first. So for, first is a form form name, which is basically the label for the form. So you can maybe call it dog training, training form. And on submit, this is basically what will happen when people or when clients submit the form. So you have the option to put it on a URL if you want them to be redirected to maybe a thank you page. Or it could be your website. It could be your Facebook group and stuff like that. Or you have the option to switch it over to message. So after this is submitted, they will just receive this uh, thank you message after they submitted the form. Yeah. And you have the option to customize the thank you message here. Uh, pixel ID, if you're collecting like maybe audiences, you can have your pixel ID here. And uh, for the pic, um, this is quite advanced, but for pixel events, you can have the option to choose any specific like pixel event. And lastly, for the form uh, settings, you need to turn on sticky contact if you think uh, this clients might still, or this form can be maybe filled out by some of our existing users. So what sticky contact does is it will pre-fill this form for them if they already have fill, filled out any of your existing forms like before. So for example, if I already filled out some of your form and I'm going to maybe fill out this form, automatically my full name, email address, and something like that I already filled out would be automatically filled into this form. So if you want that to happen, just turn on the sticky contact on. So yeah, and another thing we have GDPR that can turn on. And now we also have the enabled time zone to, uh, available now with our forms. So what enabled time zone means is it will automatically gather the information for the user or the recipient's um, time zone. So if they fill it out in the USA automatically, their contact record that they will submit to this form will automatically have their time zone set to whatever time zone they have uh they have submitted the form for uh the form from. So yeah. Any questions so far with the forms? Are we all good? So yeah, are we all good? So yeah, so we're actually done with the form. So what we're going to do now, the next thing that you're going to do is you need to maybe send out this form to your clients, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to click on integrate and then you have the option to have this uh, option if you're going to have your form as a pop-up. But in our case, we're just going to have the form link or the native form link. So you're just going to click on copy form link paste that there and your form link will look like this. So this is the link that you're going to uh, um, copy and send it to maybe, I uh, put it on your Facebook group, put it on your maybe, uh, what do you call this? Facebook post or social media post and stuff like that. And for Trisha for Canva, this is uh, if you're going to maybe add a form that they can fill out on your like sales page or the like, contact page on your Canva website, just have this link um, added on some of your elements on Canva. So that's basically how you're going to do it. So yeah, any oh, questions? Awesome. Uh, yeah, so any questions so far? I think we're all good. So yeah, so we're actually done with the form. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to maybe show you the new payment links that we have inside Techmatics, which can be found on your payments and then this payment links tab here on top. So the very first thing that you need to do before you can go, uh, you're going to create a payment link is you need to head over to products and then create your product. But before you could do this, you need to make sure that your Stripe is integrated. So make sure your Stripe is linked to your account. So uh, just give me one sec, okay, sorry. So yeah, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a product. So let me just create a product. And this one could be, uh, let's call it uh one on one on one coaching call, coaching, coaching 
call with Febby. And then let's have, for example, this is your product. And then what you're going to do is you can maybe upload a media because this will look good into your, uh, what do you call this, in your payment page. So what I'm going to do is I will upload a file. Maybe I'll just use something as, I'll just use our own logo. Uh, I mean, our old logo as our uh, link media for this product. And then the most important thing is to have your price. So for the prices, you have the option to have a one-time price or a recurring price. But in our case, I just want to maybe have a one-time price for a coaching call. So let's have it for maybe, for example, 80 bucks. 80 bucks. And then we can now have our uh, uh, different currency for our products because this is actually new. And then you get, you get, you're just going to click on save because this is not a maybe a physical product where you can add variety and stuff like that. So that's basically it. Just save. And that's all good. So after you have created your product on products, what you need to do is this is where you're going to go to payment links. So in payment links, you can just click on create new payment link. And then this is basically where we're going to choose a product. So we just created, uh, we just, uh, what do you call this? Created a product earlier, right? So choose a product that you have created. If it has multiple prices in there, just choose a price that you want to uh, be specific in this payment link. And then you have the option to uh, require for the phone number because currently it will ask for the first name, last name, and email. If you want to collect their phone number, you can just turn this on. If you want to uh, collect their shipping address, you can also turn this on. And if you want them to have the coupon codes, you can have the coupon code option here. So yeah, and you have the option to either pay, book, uh, and donate for our button here. So since this is a coaching call, I just put in a book and that's basically it. So that's basically how easily you can create a payment link for your products inside Techmatics. So you're just going to click on save. And then after that, you're just going to preview it. And this is now the payment link that you're going to send out to your clients. It could be maybe via DM. It could be via maybe sales page. And for Trisha, this is basically where you're going to redirect people to pay on your sales page on Canva. So just grab this link. And then basically this is where they're going to pay for the product that you have on your sales page so that those payments will go through your tech, to your uh, Stripe account and the contacts that made the payment will automatically be added as contact inside your Techmatics account. So, okay, so in my like buy here button, whatever yes. on my that page. Okay, perfect. Yes, Thank you. Basically. That's nice and easy. Okay. Yeah, that's very easy. <laughs> awesome. So that's a new update that we got. It's basically skipping all the order forms of uh, order form creation and uh, like funnel page, like template creation and stuff like that. So that's basically how you're going to maybe skip all those steps and just basically use this payment link as the payment link for your clients to like uh, pay for your products. So yeah, any questions so far with the payment links? All good, so I think we're all good. And to address the current issue we got with our forms, calendars and payments, um, all of those stuff we actually have the Techmatics footprints in there, which is our uh, own like domain coming from your account. So in order for us to customize it, but take note, it might affect all of your existing links. It could be, for example, if you have those links added to your website, to your link tree, especially with the forums, calendar links and stuff like that, you might need to update those links because if we're going to do this type of stuff, it might like, you know, it might mess up your current link. So you might be very careful with this one to decide if you want to do this step because it might like disable some of your existing links that's already published on your websites. Um, yeah, so let me just go to settings, business profile, and basically this branded domain that you can find into your business settings. So this is basically where we're going to add your custom domain in order for you to have your um branded domain for the calendars so hang on let me just uh i think i have a question from sonia i had a question for payment do we need an automation email to confirm the receipt okay that's a great question sonia thank you for asking so for the payments you can definitely create an automation if you want to maybe send a confirmation email to your clients but um actually um let me just go here no we don't have to send it here it could be coming from this setting right here.
go to payments, go to setting, and you can actually enable autom automatic sales receipt for payments. So if you want people to automatically receive a receipt from your payments, uh, from the payments, you can just turn this on. You can just customize what you can find here. So the payments, uh, the receipt will be optimized. So yeah, I'll get, so yeah, so, thank you for asking that. So yeah, I actually forgot. I should have, uh, it's actually, actually part of our, uh, my timeline for today, but I skipped it. So thank you for bringing it up. So yeah, so let's go back to business profile settings for our branded domain. So you can now have your own branded domain for uh for your calendars, forms, and then payment links because we have already uh, received a lot of like queries about that in the past couple of years and technetics. So what we can do with a branded domain is we need to create a domain pointing, or, I mean, a C name pointing to this record right here. But the good thing about Techmatics for like domain like updates and stuff like that is we now have a direct integration with some of the top domain server provider. It includes GoDaddy, cPanel, um, Google Domains. I don't think we have SiteGround, but we have Ionos and stuff like that. So if you have your domain um, hosted in there, you don't have to manually add the records. What you're going to do is I'll just modify it because uh, I already added a um link earlier so what i'm going to do is for example i'm going to use um make sure to maybe decide on whatever domain or subdomain you're going to um use for that could be maybe used for your forms for the calendars and for the payment links so it could be maybe a link that your domain.com so for example we can have technetics.net or it could be for example it could be maybe uh what are I can actually think of any other, uh, it could be account that your domain.com. So it really depends on how you're going to, uh, what are the subdomain that you want to add. But in our case, maybe I'll just want to use link.techmatics.net because this is my domain. And I don't want to have techmatics.com showing up on my, like, you know, on my like domain stuff. So I'm just going to do that. I'll just click on continue. And since my domain is hosted in Google domains, I actually don't have to manually add those records in. But if you guys have your domain, maybe uh, hosted on a different uh, like domain server or uh, what do you call this, domain provider, and you don't know how to do it, you can just email me at support at techmatics.com so I can help you out on linking your domain inside Techmatics from your uh, domain server. So yeah, so these are the records that this process will add. It will add a CNAME record with the hostname link and the required value or the pointed value to this uh, IP right here. So since I got it in Google domain, I'll just click on authorize the main. And then I'll just switch over from account because this account does not have access to that domain. I'll just go to support. Mm -hmm. So let me just do that uh, again. It should be, oh, hang on. It should not do that. I think I already have it. Yeah, I think I already have it. So I won't, because there's some like uh, important documents that inside our documents, so I won't do that. But that's basically how uh, the stuff that you're going to do in order for you to add a custom domain for your branded, so uh, for your like links, for your booking links, payment links, and forms. I, I actually already added um something earlier. It's called new.technetics.net. So this is our new um branded for this sub account because Specific, uh, like I, I think before it's basically linked the techmatics.com. So now I have new the techmatics.net. So that's basically how you're going to customize your domain that will go out with your forms, calendar links, booking links, and stuff like that. Any other questions so far? Do you guys have any questions for me? Anything particular in techmatics? If you're having some troubles and stuff like that, are we all good? Oh, I think we're all good. So yeah, so I think we will um wrap up our session today uh um in here. So any maybe uh like follow up questions. I'll get I'll get that's great. So yeah, so thank you guys for jumping on a call with me today. We'll have this uh record um this session recorded, so we'll upload the recording on our Facebook group later on, and we'll send an email for identification that the 
uh, recording has been uploaded to our YouTube channel. So if you guys have any questions, particular questions with technetics, any any issues you're, uh, you're dealing with, you can uh, you can just post a question on our Facebook group or you can just email me at support at techmatics.com or not at techmatics.com so we can address those issues. So yeah, so once again, thank you guys for joining me in today. See you by next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.